Hi guys, this is Donna with Love Rocks, and today we're going to do this little frog uh, coming across the pond. Uh, I want to start by saying thank you to everybody who has subscribed to our channel. We really appreciate all the support, and those of you who are watching that haven't subscribed, please do. Uh, it helps us to push more videos out, so we would really appreciate that. And if you are entering the contest for the drawing for this rock, you need to comment and subscribe to be in the drawing. So let's get going. Um, this is the shortest video that I have done. And I will tell you why. Uh, the reason being that I had to set up in a different place than I normally do to do this video because of the construction that we're under. And I accidentally got in front of the camera where it was set up and didn't realize it. So a lot of the video was blocked by my head. And so I really apologize. I had to edit it all out. Um, but it was such a cute little rock that I didn't want to just toss the video. I did want to get it out there. So I think that you'll get the gist of it. It's not a real difficult painting. So I think you'll, you'll get it and you'll understand what you need to do and where you need to put things. Um, I made sure and put the colors uh, up so that you could see those. And it is very uh, basic shading and highlighting in order to get this little frog on the lily pad done. Um, probably the only issue was I didn't have uh, numerous different green colors. And so therefore, um, I really had to play with the, the mixing of my green in order to show that the lily pad was separate than his body and his feet and still be able to get shading and highlights in both of them without the two colors bleeding on top of each other. So... Uh, if you have several different colors of green, that would be great. Uh, you can put it in there and, um, and you should be able to uh, highlight that and put in your, your darks everywhere that you need to do it in different colors as long as you do. Now, if you only have a couple of colors to choose from, like I did, um, you can always, you know, mix your colors up and, and come up with those different colors that you need in order to, um, to get that difference between the lily pad and, and your frog. Other than that, we've got, of course, the little butterfly on there. And like I always tell you, please, um, pick any colors that you want for your butterfly. Uh, it can be anything. And then you've got the little fish that jumps up in front of him. I went ahead and made him blue, but you could have went other colors. You could have went more of an aqua, or you could have went into um, like maybe a, a bass color, a silver color, something like that. You could have went into uh, something like the reds, like maybe a salmon, um, those colors. You can do anything you want with these. Um, what I bring to you is basics because the colors aren't as important to me as getting down the structure of the painting and showing you where to put the highlights and where to put those, those, um, shaded areas. Um, you could do a lot more with this. You could actually paint the background if you wanted to. Uh, you could have the water beneath it. You could have... Uh, like a sunset or something behind it. You could put trees behind it. You could put just about anything. Uh, I, I, if you follow me at all, you know that I just, when I'm painting tutorials, I want them to stay simple so that uh, your mind is, is dedicated to the object that we're actually painting and you're not having to deal with the chaos of a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, let's see, if you're new to the channel, let's tell you a little bit about supplies. I use folk art paint. You can get it at any um, of your craft stores. Uh, you can also get it at a few stores that are not craft stores, such as Walmart. Uh, you can get it at, you know, I found some at uh, uh, one of those Dollar General Family Dollar, one of those stores uh, the other day. Um, I use folk art multi-purpose. The multi-purpose seems to stick to my rocks better. So I, I have used both. 
the the plain surface, uh, you know, just the normal one. And then I've used the multi-purpose. I like the multi-purpose the best. My black is uh, not a multi-purpose. It's the only one I use that's not. And I use it so much for mixing and things like that that I haven't noticed a difference with it. So that's what I use for paints. When I go to my brushes, I have two different kinds of brushes. I have a very cheap, inexpensive, uh, non-brand name brush that I got. And honestly, I think I got them at, I think I got those at Hobby Lobby um, that I use. And then I have a really, um, my favorite set, which is the Benisi brushes. Um, I have a link in the description for all of this stuff so you can go in there and you can look. Um, but the Benisi brushes, I love them. They fit your hand really well. They come in different sizes. You can get them off of Amazon. Uh, you get a set of like six or eight brushes for under 20 bucks. Um, and so I, I really enjoyed those brushes and I do use them the most. Um, let's see. Oh, and when you're looking for those brushes, make sure that you type in detail brushes because it's the very small detail brushes is the ones you're looking for. Um, and then I use two different sprays for my uh, sealer. I use one that's made by Krylon. I use the Fusion All-in-One Clear Gloss. Um, and I also use, uh, I think it's a Krylon Times 2 Clear Gloss. So either one, they both work well with, um, with uh, rocks. They do well outside. Um, I don't believe that it is something that seals it just, you know, indefinitely. It, it is a spray sealer. So if you're going to leave it outside, I would check it maybe once a year or so and just make sure that it's, it's not fading or anything. But it's an easy sealer to put on and it's fast drying and it, it's something that I use and I enjoy. Um, it's, it's just... A very non non nonsense sealer. Um, like I said, it dries fast and it's easy to apply. Um, let's see what else. As far as any other supplies, those are my big ones. I, I don't use much else than that. Um, so if you're just starting, you know, go through your stuff and and see what you've got because you really don't need much. Uh, to, to paint rocks. And again, when you're painting rocks, especially if you're using just regular rocks, which I do just off of the landscape, they're so rough that they're kind of hard on your stuff. So you don't want anything too expensive. Uh, if you're deciding that at some point you're going to go um, professional, yeah, I would say that it'd be worth putting out the extra money. But if you're doing it for fun or to give away or as a hobby, I, I wouldn't put out the extra money to do that. So um, I hope that uh, you get a chance to try this one. It is very easy. It is not difficult to do. Um, it's something that I actually got this one off of a free um, clip art website. Um, and then I put in all of the colors that I wanted and, and kind of changed up the frog a little bit. So I just thought it was something different. It wasn't anything I had done before, so I kind of wanted to throw that in there after doing so many gnomes. I got a lot of people who have uh, responded that they would like to see some other things. Um, some of the things that have come up is, of course, um, everybody wants to see a sea turtle, so I, I will eventually do a sea turtle. Um, somebody asked for a bear, and then I had someone else ask for a wolf. So I, I'm still looking at other stuff, so I will get you guys some other things uh, as we go. Stick with me. I promise you, I, I, won't, I won't disappoint you. I'll find other things to throw out there for you. And uh, I just hope that, that you're enjoying these. Um, 
the last <laughs> few months with all this construction has been difficult, but I'm sure glad that I've been able to pump some out for you guys to, to be able to watch. And thank you for sticking with me and, and waiting for them. Some of these uh, videos have taken a bit to get out. So there you have it. Um, I, I did do some lining on this one just because um, I, I wanted, when I do characters like this, I like to get some lines around them. So I did do some lining and I'll tell you what, um, I've played with my line brush enough now that I'm starting to get some really good thin lines. So if that's something that you're, um, you're not proficient at yet, oh, please just stick with it. I promise you, you'll get better and better at it as you go. It just takes some time to figure out your line brush. The other thing is making sure that you have the number of hairs on your line brush thinned out. Um, I thought mine was thinned out enough and it wasn't. And so a couple of weekends ago, I, I cut some more out of it and uh, just go at it slow because you can never put them back. <laughs> and um, I finally got it down to where I feel like it's really, it's manageable. It's I can control it, you know, paint on it doesn't drop it down, and um, I, I can get that thin line. The other thing is just learning how much you want to thin it in order to do that. Well, guys, there he is, and thank you so much for coming back to our channel. I'll see you in a few more days. I'll pump another one out, and I'll get it out to you. I hope you enjoyed. Bye for now.